So if you wanted to come into the Instagram inspiration webinar, uh, then you're in the right place. That's just to let you know that you're actually in the right place. Isn't that nice to know? Alrighty. Um, so our three guest speakers uh, today are Jordan Enright of Bloom Marketing Media, Amanda Benny of the Eyebrow Studio and Annette Simmons of Wildflower Loose Leaf Tea. Uh, my name is Fiona Blinko. I run DIY Digital. That is my business. We um, build websites and do online marketing. Uh, so Jordan Enright of Bloom Marketing Media. She is our first presenter for this Instagram webinar and she's going to um, tell us what she knows about Instagram and, and what some of her tricks and tips are. Over to you, Geordie. Hi everyone, um, just hi <laughs> and um, welcome. And I just thought I'd start with just a little bit about me. Um, I have my own uh, marketing business. So I specialize in social media marketing and dabble in a bit of just everyday marketing as well. Um, I'm full-time at uni as well and do some Intimo um, sales on the side as well. So a few little um, bits and pieces that I do and spend my time with, but really love the marketing side of things. So I've got a few clients that I work for. Okay, so um, I just thought I'd start with, um, for the people that do know um, about Instagram and everything else, that's awesome. Um, for, but just a little bit for everyone, I'd start with um, just your Instagram stories. So basically, um, I don't know if you've used them before, but um, they're the things that are probably getting the most um, results for people at the moment is your Instagram stories. I think because, you know, people will often, they're the first thing you see at the top of Instagram. So people will just click and it will just go through to the next one and the next one and the next one. So depending on how many people you follow, you'll see all their stories and their little snapshots. Um, I've got a few examples that I've put up um, of what I've used before um, that have worked. You know, you can use hashtags, you can, you know, um, show what your, um, what's for sale in your business or what you're promoting. Um, if you are unsure how to do it on the left hand side of the screen, there's a little, um, I've got an example. So obviously it will be your profile picture and a little plus button. If you click on that, that will then take you through to the story section where you can build it. So you can put captions and like I said, hashtags, you can tag people. If you're working with someone and you're promoting yourself and them, a bit like today, you can jump on and do an Instagram story. And if they've got Instagram, you can tag yourself and them and then what that will then do is it will go to your contacts and it will go to their contacts. So you're reaching a broader range of people. Um, you can do funny little gifts on there. You can do all sorts. Um, one thing that I have picked up recently is you can actually put your hashtags on there, but if you've got an image, you can actually hide the hashtags underneath the image. So you're not actually seeing those hashtags. Um, which obviously then gets out to everybody, but um, you, it doesn't look messy on your screen. So you want to try and keep it nice and clean for presentation, like for your presentation. So um, that's a little bit about Instagram stories. Um, the next one is obviously gaining likes. Now Instagram has changed a lot with their algorithms and they tend to do it quite regularly and speaking to a lot of different people, you know, who deal with influencers and, all of those different things and their businesses. Instagram is one of the hardest ones sometimes for businesses to kind of get into because it is changing so frequently. Um, basically what we like to do is obviously post like really relevant content to your clients and who you're wanting to reach. Um, create your own hashtags, have a look at what ones are working for people, what ones um, are relevant to you. You want to make sure you have relevant hashtags. Um, and obviously people like to know what you're doing in your business. So instead of always just promoting sales or promoting products or things like that, post what you're doing throughout the day. So if you've got something interesting that you're doing, put that on there. If you've got a few meetings and you want to share that with people, put that on there because people love to know what you're doing in the business. It's not always just about promoting, you know, your sales or products or all of those kind of things. I know we can get caught up in, promoting that. I know I do myself. Um, so it's good to just kind of throw in there a little bit about, you know, what you're doing in your business. Um, a little thing on hashtags as well. Um, I've put up a little example. Um, there's two ways to do it. You can put it in your actual um, like comment 
Um, so I've got on the left hand side there, you can see that I've got one. But then what I've done is I've gone in and put the hashtags in the comments section. Um, you need to do that within, you know, five to 15 seconds of you posting the post. So what a good way to do is if you have all the hashtags that you really like to use and keep it in the notes in your phone, then you can just copy and paste and it goes straight across and it's really quick and easy. And then also too, you're not having to write over and over and over again your hashtags. So it just makes it a little bit easier just to, you know, keep them the same and then, you know, it's uniform across your brand as well. Um, that's just a little tip that, you know, most of us find easy to do. Then that way it's just a lot more streamlined for you all. Um, okay, so Instagram followers again is, um, you know, it, back when Instagram first started, you could pay to buy followers. Now Instagram have stopped that. Um, which I think is probably a good thing because then you've actually got organic people that want to follow you rather than just making it yourself look really good because you've got X amount of followers on Instagram. So um, the way to do this now is you have to do it all organically. So you have to follow accounts of your interest. So if there's people you want to connect with or there's an Instagram account that you really like and you go, oh, yes, I'd really like to follow them kind of follow them but don't just follow them if you want to go like like a few photos make some comments on their account to actually show that you're really engaged with them because nine times out of ten if you show that engagement with them they're going to then go oh, okay let's have a look at this account and go through and have a bit of a look and you know reciprocate it with you so it's better to do it that way rather than just going on and go oh, i'm going to follow this account this account this account and this account and then, you know, nine, like I know myself, if I look and I've had people follow me and they haven't really engaged, I'm kind of like, mm, if they're not of interest to me, I'm probably not going to follow them back. So it's just a little bit about that. Um, again, sure. you've got to, yeah. So just before we get too far beyond the hashtags. Yeah. Um, uh, there's two questions that have come up about that so I thought maybe before yeah no that's fine far beyond. so one of the questions is is it better to put hashtags in a comment rather than the post itself if so why and the other question is how many hashtags should you have what's your view on those two things um I've been trialing both at the moment so I've been trialing probably to put my first kind of three or four important hashtags in the actual comment sorry, in the actual post. And then you're encouraged to put the rest of them into a comment so then your post doesn't look messy. That's the point of it. And also too, you are allowed to have up to about 30 hashtags. I probably wouldn't do the complete 30, but you could have, um, you know, in between that. So that's why we put them in the comments so it doesn't make your post look really messy. Um, but still put a couple in the top just to, you know, have something in there so then you know it's it's instagram it's about hashtags so that's kind of why we do it like i said i'm trialing both options at the moment just to see how it's working um so yeah that's probably my answer to those if that's helpful <laughs> and and so if you you recommend not to have the full 30 do you think anything more than 10 is too much or anything more than 20 is too much what's your feeling about how many i'd probably go to about 20 okay all right thank you yeah. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, with the followers. Obviously, um, yeah, again, you post your engage, um, engaging content and um, use your Instagram stories. Like I said, the Instagram stories are probably as good as the Facebook ones at the moment. Everyone's tending to lean towards viewing stories rather than posts a lot more. And, you know, it's good. You can just whack up a little 10-second video about what you're doing or about a product and then again people get to see you it's not just about the pretty pictures you put up I guess um, I also did put up just a little bit of a um, demographic um, chart there for you guys just to have a bit of a look about Instagram users in Australia at the moment that was in March 2020 obviously there may be more people online due to corona um, but it's about the same um, especially for the age gaps like the age brackets so um, Obviously, the people that are using it the most are from ages between 25 to 34 and mainly women, but um, men are pretty close there as well. So that's kind of a bit of just a snapshot as for the demographics, just so then you've got a bit of an idea too about, um, you know, where 
people like what kind of age groups are on Instagram so you can go okay well I can tap into this audience and this audience um another good thing um to look at is if you've got an Instagram business page use that rather than using a personal page because if you've got an Instagram business page you can look at the insight section um and that's really important for businesses um the insights are um you know you can see what are the most reactive times on Instagram for you to, you know, be posting. You can work out if, you know, eight o'clock at night is better for you and your viewers or if it's, you know, seven o'clock or those kind of things. The kind of the rule of thumb that we've kind of always gone by is if you go really early in the morning, like 6.37, you'll get one lot of people. And then if you go kind of your seven, eight o'clock, you'll get a different lot of people that you can kind of target um, as to who's online when. So that's just probably a little bit of a thing to keep an eye out is your insights because that will give you a good indication of when's the best post, when is the best time to post for you as well. So, um, and another question come through, Geordie. Yeah, <laughs> are you? I, th I think you answered this one earlier. Yeah. Um, but uh, perhaps if you could just kind of revisit, yeah. are there advantages to using stories? Um, one of our participants hasn't really got the handle on what their purpose is. So perhaps you could revisit the stories a little bit, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, the reason for the stories, uh, like I said, at the moment, they're getting viewed a lot more than the posts on Instagram. And you can put up as many stories you want for a day. Whereas you tend to, with a post, you don't want to be posting 10 times a day with, you know, um, posts on Instagram. You kind of want to do maybe one or two. Um, but with the, if you're doing stories, you can do 10 different stories a day and that stays up for 24 hours. So people can see that over and over and over again. And every time you post a new story, it goes to the beginning of their story feed. So they get to watch it over and over or they get to watch the new one and then go to the next person. So stories are just a little bit more of a new thing and they seem to be working really well. Um, and it's a little bit more engaging content because, like I said, you can do videos, you can do all sorts with them. So that's kind of the purpose. Okay, thank you. Cool. Um, that anyway brings me to the end of the slides anyway. Um, just a little bit of a thank you from me and uh, any details if you do want to get in contact with me um, for any marketing help for your business. We will now go through to um, Amanda. Amanda is of the Eyebrow Studio and I think at last count, Amanda, um, you had uh, three th over 3,000. You can let us know uh, how many um, followers you've got on your uh, account. Um, but Amanda has been, you know, your client base is 16 to 25 year old females I mean I'm sure there's more people that come in but you might want to talk a bit about that but my understanding is Instagram has been um, really good for you so uh, it, I think it'll be interesting to hear how you've um, you've been using Instagram for your business over to you Amanda thank you so hopefully everyone can hear me so my name is Amanda I am the director of the eyebrow studio so a little bit about me, I started my own little salon, renting a little room in a little hairdressing shop. And by, um, very fast, I got quite big and now I have six salons around Adelaide. Um, so we do a huge amount on Instagram. Pretty much I run the Instagram page for all the salons. We have one page for all the salons. Um, so things that I found that has worked the best is obviously like Geordie was saying, you've got your stories and then you've got your, um, your feed, what you do. So with the stories, which is the little icon up the top, which is the little circle, I put a lot of a bit more personal stuff on there. I will do little videos on there, especially with this whole coronavirus that's going on. I will talk to my clients, go, hope everyone's going well. You know, we'll keep you guys updated when we're going to reopen. And I make it a lot more personal in, in that section. And also to make it a little bit more fun, I will do quizzes and I'll do polls and stuff like that. And people really enjoy that and I have a bit of fun with that one. Whereas the feed is a little bit more... Uh, professional photos, writing a lot of information about what we've done, how we've done it and stuff like that, where the, the, um, the stories I keep a bit more personal. Um, 
what I like to, I'll show you a couple of pictures that have worked really well for our Instagram page with the salons. Um, a lot of people, they like to see real photos. They want to see, they don't want to see just Google, Google photos. They want to see actually, you know, you in there. So when they come in the salon, they're like, oh, I saw you on Instagram. I, you know, they can connect with you. Um, and I don't like to put other people's work on. I like to put my work on so they know what they're getting. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of photos that's worked quite well. So this is just a couple of eyebrows and this is a real client for us. So this is just a basic um, eyebrow shape and lamination. And I'll put this on the feed. I will put what we've done, how we've done it, um, and all the hashtags and all the information. Whereas the stories, I'll put in there maybe go on, can anyone guess what this is? And then I'll put an option lamination or... Um, microblading and then they can have a bit of fun with that as well um, and then we'll put something like this up this is obviously a real client as well and they can see the difference once again on the feed I'll put a big description and talk about it whereas the stories I'll put another feed where people can go can, you know, can, can you do you think this is real yes or no so they have a bit of fun with it um, and then I like to, something like this. And this is what people engage. They find it good where that when they come in, they know that we're real. We know that they're real people, that we know that, especially, especially with beauty salons, they don't want to get embarrassed going into beauty salons. So having a bit of fun with your clients and showing that, you know, we do male a lot of male clients as well but this actual particular client he's from the radio station and then from there i'll hashtag the radio station i'll um, mark him so then that goes to all the other people that follow him as well um but they can see you know we're having fun with it um and then the last photo can i'll just put up something there amanda um, when I yeah, talk sure. to businesses about um, them using real photos, because it's a conversation I have a lot with my business in my business advisory sessions, and a number of them yes. will say, oh, you know, they won't let me. Um, and certainly there will be some clients and customers who won't. They, yes. They're just not in the least Definitely. interested in being photographed. But clearly you've got yes. a few who are okay with it. So, you know, yes. what? How, how do you go about asking these people or, 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 what? you know, is your relationship pretty good with them? It's just a pretty like, look, we're going to put you on Instagram. Do you mind? Or like, how do you make that approach and how, how difficult or easy do you find it? Yeah, I definitely, obviously it depends on what kind of business you have. Because with my business, I have recurring clients, you know, every round about every three weeks, I get a bit of a relationship with them. And then I'll say, would you mind if I put a photo up? A lot of them are happy if they don't get their full face. So, you know, I'll just take half a face of them um, or like this one where it's a side profile. Um, but where yeah, a lot of people just don't want a hundred percent direct face, but as well, if they're loving with a product, that they're fine to go on it. But definitely, I don't ask the first time. I get a bit of a relationship with them first, um, and obviously, I show them the photo. Okay, are you happy with this photo? Um, and you know, we might take ten photos before we get something that they're actually happy with. Um, and then you can do filters as well on your photos, so it makes them a little bit prettier. So if you take the photo and then do your, your filters on your photo or you can do the filters obviously on Instagram as well, um, then they're happy with that. So I'll always show them before I put it up. Okay, terrific. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Hayley from Adlady. So we do have a few influence that come in as well. And so when we do have the influence come in, we take a hell of a lot of photos but saying that we actually do their eyebrows so they don't just come in and talk about a product and then walk away we actually do the service on them and that's what I like to get across to my clients that this is just not a person coming in just to promote your business they actually come in for the service and use our products so that and that's what people want to know they don't want to just oh yeah, that's just another person, that, that's another company that we're promoting. They actually use our products. Um, so, and it's really good to have some professional photos on there, especially with your feed and then the stories. Uh, I'll make it a little bit more 
I, I build where I have a, a connection with the clients. Um, and I ask, I ask them questions as well. So, you know, you'll be like, how are you, how is everyone going through this coronavirus? How is everyone feeling? Um, and have a bit of fun with it. Definitely have a bit of fun, but obviously be careful how, how much fun you don't want the stories to go for a long time. I found that if you're talking too much, people will just scroll, th uh, scroll through you too fast. So you, you do want to just make it short, sharp and shiny. Um, I think that's the best, best that's worked for me. Um, and yeah, like I said, we make a lot of uh, fun with the, with the stories. So you do your quizzes, you do um, polls and stuff like that, which, you know, if you've got a couple of new products or um, we're at the moment going, okay, there's a big thing with the whole threading now. There's so many threading places. So I'll put a poll up, poll up. What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer threading? Or do you prefer waxing? And it's quite interesting what you get back. And um, yeah, it's, it's good for your knowledge as well as much as it is fun for them. So it's like well, how Fiona just did the poll then. People find that quite interactive and quite fun. I do the same. I obviously don't do a huge, like you don't do it every day, but I'll definitely do it, you know, a couple of times a week where it, it's fun to have on. Um, I also make it a little bit personal. So on Sundays, I will, because I'm a single mum, I, I will put a photo up of my daughter and I'll put a photo up and stuff like that. So people can see that I am real. I am this single mum that's got a business that's working flat out and trying to balance everything. So I, yeah, I make it, that little bit personal so when people come in they feel like they know me already that's terrific amanda thank you very much and can i just ask you uh one um one other question which is around the poll if you're doing a poll yep. um yes you know you have to then presumably be active on instagram to you know to see the results and kind of talk about it so let's say you know you've got dinner on or something else is happening you know you potentially wouldn't want to have do the poll, then do something else. Do you have to kind of be ready and in, be ready to be interactive on Instagram for the next half an hour, shall we say, or hour after you put the poll out? No. Or, you know, what's... what's No, no. Oh, okay. So like, like Jordan said, when if you do the, the poll, um, especially on the... Like I do it on the stories. Um, they're, they're active. They're on there for 24 hours. And then if it's your poll, so obviously you're hosting it, you can swipe up and it'll tell you exactly how many people have voted. Um, they'll, they'll give you all the information and you can just, as long as you go on there within the next 24 hours, it will show you all the details. Okay, lovely, fantastic. Uh, Annette and Amanda, another question coming through is, um, there's a business, uh, Beth, who has a food truck and she's got like the food truck side of things, but she's also got eco-friendly gifts. So the two are kind of, they, they complement each other nicely, but they're kind of different. Would you suggest that she has separate accounts or would you suggest she keeps it together? Do you want to weigh in on that, what, that one? It's hard because they're probably two different, um, lots of clientele. So it wouldn't hurt to have two and you could always then, you know, if you've got more followers on your food, van one you could still like cross promote so what i do is i've got a lot more followers on my personal account so if i post something on one of my business accounts i will then share that in my story so then it goes across and then i can reach more people so you can cross promote as well which is probably a good way to do it but i personally would probably have two separate ones because like i said two different lots of clientele but it's completely up to you lovely thank you and then can we, we were going to see if you could find a story to show. Yeah. Um, this is my personal one because I've got um, some intimate stuff on there that I did yesterday. Um, let's see if I can flick it around enough to show you guys. So yesterday we did um, some intimate stuff. There's probably going to be some personal stuff on here as well. So don't mind yeah. that. But that's the, an example of how I cross promoted yesterday. So, on my pers on my sorry on my Intimo account, I did a video just to let people know that we've got new products dropping tomorrow, and just a little bit of a let them know what's been going on in my week and things like that. So then, what I did was I shared that video from that account to my personal account to reach more people. 
So that's just a little uh, bit of a way to cross promote a little bit too. Fiona, do you want me just to, I'll just go through, obviously people that are really not sure how to do it, I'll, I'll do the same as what Geordie's done. It's just put my phone up and show exactly what we both mean. Um, Lovely. So if I put, now can everyone see that? So there's your Instagram page. Um, so up here, is what, is what we say of the other stories. So that stays up for the 24 hours and people go through that constantly. Whereas these are the down here, they keep, they've got to keep scrolling to see you. Okay, so where this one stays up always for the 24 hours. So just to do it, you have your little icon here. So that's your business. Now, if you press that, okay, now it comes up, these are the, the feeds that I've put up yesterday. So they, they, I put them up last night, so they're still on. Um, but if I want to add on some more, it's, um, there's a little icon once again there with the circle and the plus, which is your company. So if you press, let me get it on, that one, then it'll come up to your photo albums in your phone. So if I want, and then you're down the bottom, you'll see down here, you can press the button here, which goes to your photos. And then I'll just get through my personal photos as well. So if I click on a photo, so I've clicked on this one. And then if you want to add these polls on, up here are a whole heap of icons. So that, you know, have a play around with. Um, it won't put it up straight away. It will put it up once you're ready to send it. So you can have a big play around with it. So if I want to do a poll, I'll press on one of the icons here and you come up with all these different options. Tag people, your hashtag, and this is where you can put all that stuff on your feed story. So if I go on here and do say, I wanna do um, questions, you can write on here your question. Do you prefer waxing or threading? So you can write on here, whatever it is, um, and then go done. And then you can move this wherever you want it. And now that has created your, your question, your poll, your hashtags, anything else you want on your story. And then here on the bottom, it will say send. And then that will send it to, that will put it up. Even if you make a mistake, you can delete it. Okay, so there's no going, oh my gosh, it's gonna, everyone's gonna see it, as long as you delete it straight away. Uh, and there's a whole heap of stuff on here that you can do it. Even if you, you do it on this, on this story and you go, oh, I love the way this looks, um, you can save it. So down here, you've got the arrow, which means you'll save that photo and you can put it on your feed. It's really good to actually see it in action and to see sort of how that, that works. All right, so we've got a few more questions potentially, um, but I'm going to leave them till after uh, afterwards because I'd like to hear from Annette now. I've had wildflower loose leaf tea as a business for 18 months now, and Instagram is where I have actually grown the business. So without Instagram, I don't think my business would have survived or grown. Or most of my sales, over 90% of my sales, come directly from Instagram. And I was very lucky with Instagram. I'd played around with it a lot personally before. So to start the business was easy enough. Um, but thankfully, I had a lovely daughter who um, nudged me in the right direction and showed me a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So for me, um, I personally use another app. Okay, it's all a little bit confusing. I know when you're out there and you go, oh my gosh, this sounds like so much more work. I don't want to do anything else, seriously. But it's worth it. So I use an app called Plan, P-L-A-N-N, and it's free. And so I use that and it is, or you can pay for extra, but I use the free one. And what I do is I upload a group of different photos and you can move them around so you can see consistency. I've, I've learned that it's really important in um, selling my products is to have a, a beautiful feed that's easy to see, that's inviting, that is um, the colours coordinated, that the pictures sort of all go together, um, that if I throw a quote in, that fits in the right spot. Um, so I use plan because that helps me move everything around so I can see what it's going to look like and what it actually looks like now. Um, and with plan, 
you can write your, so your picture picture and you're getting ready to post and you can actually write your caption in there with lots of spaces, lots of emojis and all that sort of thing. And then you can copy and post that directly to your feed or your story. So there you go, you can do both. Um, so with plan, I usually do it directly to my um, feed. It's all been edited, it's all good. And there's even another spot where you can have different groups of hashtags. So then you just copy your hashtag and post that into the comment straight after you've posted. You can put a reminder in when your post is due. So if you like to do a post say at 6.30 when people are sitting down to watch TV and the news and they're on their phones, um, that's also your phone will beep to say, oh, you've got to do a post. Um, and that's a really good reminder. Um, another thing that I've found that's really important, I have worked with influencers. Um, so if that's a new word to you, that's someone who has a lot of um, followers. Um, I probably pick someone who looks nice. I like their feed and they're a regular mum who drinks tea, obviously. And I would ask them if they would like to take some pictures of my tea, if I send them some product. And so I post over some product and they take amazing pictures of my tea. So that's one good way to get really good um, photos of your product that you can continually use, which I have and have used on my website. Um, so that's a little tip that I've used. Also, I, um, what's another thing I do? Interact. So something that I've learned that because I've worked in shops before and customer service, so a customer walks in your shop, first thing you do is say, hi, how are you going? Can I help you? So when you get a new follower, a really good thing to do is to say, um, post them a private message and say something like, this is what we did a lot in the beginning. Hi, how are you? Thank you for following us. Thank you for liking some of these photos. Um, here's a discount code for you to buy some tea. And it, you've just um, created a conversation and a new friend or customer. So it just makes a huge, a huge difference because you're showing that you're a real person. The, the, the plan app, because uh, I would like to come back and talk about the influencers, but the plan app, um, is, is that really helped you more, do you think, from efficiency, like just being able to be yeah. very active and getting yeah. lots done? It's really helped you that. And so... How, we asked that question of the participants before, how often are they on Instagram? You know, once a week, yep. once a month, every day. So, and you said it's really helped you to grow your business. In fact, you mm -hmm. more or less said without it, you're not sure you, you would have a business almost That's like it's right. been that important. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So how often would you be on Instagram a day? <gasps> I am connecting and on Instagram for hours a day. Okay. So All right. Like Okay. For me, that is my um, shop. So I am on Instagram every, every day. So I probably start off, I, don't, I turn my phone off so that I don't do anything from 9.30 at night. Yeah. And I don't do anything before 6.30 in the morning. Um, but I sort of get on the uh, Instagram probably around 8 o'clock in the morning and start replying to stories or messages, anything that I've received overnight, any comments on my pages, anything like that. So for me, um, Instagram is like my biggest, yeah, tool. It's, it is my shop, basically. It's my yes. shop. It's your shop front. And, and how many followers do you now have on Instagram? Um, 2,200 in 18 months. Which 20? Month? Yeah, 2,200. Yeah. 2,200 in 18 months, that's pretty good. So, Annette, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy, it, it's kind of like not a, not, it's not a set and forget channel. This is, you no. know, like if you want to use Instagram, you really got to use that's, it. That's the message I'm yep. getting from you. Yep. If you don't have a shop front and you're selling a product or you're selling a business or something, um, to, it, that is your shop front. That is your business. That is where you promote your products that's where you promote who you are that's what you do um, and if you don't connect with those people those people are your customers they're not followers they're your customers you don't just look at them as oh my gosh they're my followers they're actually my customers or potential customers or their friends are or you know and whenever they post pictures I always um, 
yeah, my customers post pictures of them drinking tea. So there's more pictures that I can use and that's my stories then. Thank you very much. And a question for both Amanda and Annette that I'd like you to weigh in without necessarily naming the influencers. Um, you know, they're, it, my understanding of, I, I've, you know, when I talk to businesses who use influencers, they're usually high maintenance, but they can get terrific results, you know, and they can really grow your network beyond what you had. And I know Amanda's had some experience in this, and I know Annette, you have. So I'd be really interested in you giving just perhaps a little bit of, um, you know, your thoughts on, you know, should you use influencers? Is it worth it? What do you need to look out for? Yeah. Um, well, I'll go first. So the influencers I use are probably mums who maybe have around 3,000 to 10,000 followers. Um, and they would be content creators and that's what they would do. Um, I haven't had any issues. I don't pay any money. So there's no, no money exchanged, only, only some goods. And the only time that I've exchanged is if you've got to be very clear of what you expect from them and what they expect from you. That would be my biggest thing. Um, yeah, as long as you're upfront. So I've just sent some teas recently to someone um, she was really keen. She's been following me for a while. So she's an influencer who follows me. So I've just asked if she'd like some teas. I've posted them over. She's taken some beautiful photos. She asked, what would I like? I said, three really good photos of each product that I've sent you. And she's done that and more. So it's not so much the followers that I want. It's probably more the pictures that I can use because they look professional and it saves, they're fresh, they're new. Fantastic. And, and Amanda, have you any thoughts in this area? Um, yeah, so I've used a, a few um, um, influencers. So the main one we've used is Ab Lady. The reason why we've used Ab Lady is because obviously they promote all businesses in Adelaide, but they, they're a bit more, I find that they're down to earth people. Um, and people relate to them and, and literally it's what you see is what you get. So literally what you see in, in their Instagram and on their, on TV is, is literally is, is them. Um, and they, they tell the truth. Uh, I think that's the influence. Um, and also the, when I've used the radio station guys, they actually approached us um, and we just had a lot of fun with them. So I think the influence that we use, the people that we can connect with and have fun with um, ours is obviously we haven't exchanged money and stuff like that only if we've gone in their magazine or something like that but anytime they've put anything on their Instagram um, it, we, I've actually just done services for them so I go in on my day off or stay back after work and I'll do their eyebrows um, I'll obviously do the service for free but same thing, they do awesome photos, they do great, funny, um, interactive, and they'll put it on their feed. And then I also copy that onto my feed. So the story that they put on, I'll copy it onto my feed. Um, and that's definitely got a huge amount, a huge response. So I definitely, if you're gonna use influencers, think about the person that you want to represent your business and your product. Mm -hmm. um, to see what clientele you're going to get back and we're the same so we do from we do um we start eyebrows at the age of say like 10 we do young kids and we'll do a very basic shape for them but then i only tattooed a lady obviously before this whole coronavirus and she was 80 years old so we we balance it out for everybody but I'm known for my blunt truth. So if someone comes in and shows me a photo and go, this is what I want, I'll be like, I can do that, but I think we should do this. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? So, and I think that's what a lady uh, push over is that I will come here and, and I'll have a, a, I'll talk to you about it. I won't just come in here and that's it. So as yeah, if you're gonna get an influence, make sure it relates to your product or your service. Lovely. That's, that's fantastic. Um, we have another question on influencers, which is how do you find them? Um, which is a little bit interesting as well. <laughs> do they find you? How does that work? Uh, my influencers found me, but also I will I, I ask my clients. So I'll be like, you know, who do you follow? Um, who, um, and asking, you know, who they follow on Instagram or what they watch and stuff like that. But yeah, majority of them have found me um 
but yeah, definitely. I still keep asking the questions to everybody. And then that, would that be the same for you? Do that, do, have they seemed to found you or do, have you actually kind of gone out and sort of made a connection that you thought might be good? Uh, in the early days, we did make a connection that we thought might be good. Um, but now that they find me is better. It's just easier because you know that they like you and they like your product. Okay. Um, that's great. And we've had a comment from uh, somebody sort of basically, you know, it takes up a lot of time and you're doing everything yourself as well as running your own business. Yeah. And, and I think I'll answer that by just saying, yeah, that, that, that is in fact it, that the, the experience of most new business owners is that you're pretty much working 24 seven for maybe the first couple of years. And, you know, you do need to take some mental health breaks and you know, go to the sea occasionally and go for hikes or whatever it is that you can keep yourself uh, up to it. But it is, it, there, there is work involved and that's just the bottom line. And I think probably um, our presenters here would uh, potentially uh, agree with that. Um, we've got a couple of other questions here. Oh, one of them actually was for you, Annette. And uh, someone said that your curated feed looks very nice. It's aesthetically nice. And she kind of wondered, or he or she, sorry, I, I, I can't quite see where it was in the chat anymore because there's lots of chat happening. Um, you know, have you kind of deliberately or, you know, made it that way? And, and do you have any tips in that space? Uh, it was deliberately made that way. Um because we're appealing, tea's comforting, it's um, relaxing, it puts you in that beautiful zone. That's what I'm selling my product as. And so that's the, we made it that way. And I use plan by moving the pictures around, like I said, you know, sitting there for like half an hour or longer, moving photos to find which, oh, that one looks better there than that one. You know, it does take time. It's like a, yeah juggling like a jigsaw to try and find which pieces fit where. So I use that and then I post from there. Okay, lovely. That's fantastic. Um, and then another one, again for you, Annette, uh, how have you grouped customers, stockists and tutorials on your Insta account? Oh, um, that's in the highlights. So when you've got a business, page there's a little spot where you can add highlights and they're the ones that you actually save and That's this what is I'm talking about before that you can save your stories onto the highlights so that people can always see yeah and and Geordie you mentioned earlier that having a business page is better than a personal page and I think you mentioned it for a different reason but there we have another reason why we should be looking at a business page rather than a personal page it sounds like yeah, you can definitely do a lot more with the business page and um, yeah, for multiple different reasons, like everyone has obviously mentioned, um, but I find it really helpful for the insights because then you can really get a handle as to what's working and what's not working for your business. That's fantastic. All right. Well, look, thank you uh, very much to uh, Geordie, Amanda and Annette. Um, thank you so much for sharing freely your knowledge with all of us. It's been really terrific. And, and from the comments, I can see that people have really felt that they've got a lot of value. I can see that a few people are sort of saying, oh, I'm going to give this a go now, which is absolutely fantastic. And that's what we want you to do. And I think, Amanda, you really brought that home with just sort of saying, we can delete it or you can edit it or you can you know, play around with it before you publish it or, or you save it. So you know do have a go um, and this sounds like it's going to be a great channel for many of you um, if you can find reactions you might want to put a little bit of a clap hand or a, uh, um, a, a thumbs up to our presenters today uh, for doing a terrific job and uh, thank you very much for attending I shall end the meeting here everyone see you later